Dance of Dragons It was the civil war that brought down the Targaryen dynasty from one of its strongest points under King Viserys, the first of his name, to one of its lowest. The civil war was caused by a succession crisis between two claimants, Princess Rhaenyra and Egan II, called Egan the Elder. There are valid reasons to have supported both, and it's an interesting dilemma to pose to yourself. Which of the two you would have supported, had you the strength of a noble house? In this video, we will examine the legitimacy of Egon the Elder. Let us first recall the short history of his succession. King Viserys I had one daughter, Rhaenyra, but failed to raise any sons. One of his sons died in infancy, while the other passed away a day after birth. Because of this, the original successors were the aforementioned Queen Rhaenyra, his eldest child, and Prince Daemon, the king's brother. No doubt the king preferred his own progeny in the princess and was turned off by his brother coveting the throne. He had decreed Rhaenyra should be queen and, in 105 AC, called in the lords and ladies of the realm to pay her homage. In his later years, the king did finally have a son, Egon, from his second marriage to Alice and Hightower, but considered the matter already having been settled. Following Viserys, the first of his name death, two factions would form, the Blacks, supporting Rhaenyra, and the Greens, supporting Egon the Elder. Let's examine the claim for Egon II. The late King Viserys has succeeded the throne due to preference of the male line over the female line he inherited over his aunts. Emon and Balon were heir before them, but passed away due to old age. The throne passed on to King Viserys I and it makes sense to continue that preference. Egon may be the younger sibling to Princess Rhaenyra, but he is the eldest son and should have preference in the succession. To our modern understanding, this is a rather silly mood point over gender, but there is more at play here than the claimant's sex. The Council of 101 AC has been called to decide the matter of the previous succession. It was during this council that we've already talked about that the male line preference was established. Common law derives from previous judicious rulings, and this is a very important point. This very rule of law that established the succession is what at stake here. Should previous law practice be disregarded, it would discredit the rule of law, which in turn would undermine the authority of the monarch. Rule of law beholds authority and it mustn't be stripped away from the king. And so the supporters of Egan II could easily claim that he is the lawful ruler. We must also consider the future succession. Both Rhaenyra and her first husband, Selena Valerian, were of Targaryen heritage and had white hair with purple eyes. Princess Rhaenyra's sons, on the other hand, had resin black hair and a pug nose, much like her lover, Sir Harvin Strong. King Viserys forbid everyone to speak of a possibility of a bastardship under threat of having one's tongue pulled out, which he sometimes did. But it is likely that Princess Rhaenyra's sons were fathered by her lover instead. Should Rhaenyra have inherited, the realm would have eventually be passed from the Targaryen bloodline to the strong. As you can see, there are many strong reasons to have supported Egan II, the preference of the male line, the rule of law, and maintaining the Targaryen bloodline on the throne. However, same is true for Rhaenyra. We'll go into that in another video. For now, let's examine Egan's supporters. So who thought it would be a good idea for Egan to become king? Sir Otto Hightower, hand of King Viserys, the father of Egan's mother, Alicent Hightower, after the colors of whose dress in Atorney, the faction was named the Greens. Fun fact, he was so fearful of Prince Daemon becoming king that at one point he suggested King Viserys should make Rhaenyra his heir. Sir Tyland Lannister, Master of Coin, brought House Lannister onto the side, likely to maintain his position on the council and because he was spurned trying to court Princess Rhaenyra. Known for his words, I myself swore no such oath, in remarks to oaths made to Rhaenyra years back. Lord Boros Baratheon, courted both of the factions, joined following the betrothal of one of his daughters to Emond Duanai, 
the younger brother of Egan II. The blacks had no one to befrow. Other notables also include House Strong, the current owners of Harrenhal, House Bracken, the only loyal house in the Riverlands, and House Redvine, one of a few belligerents in the rich and chief naval power, and probably the sole naval power for the Greens. The initial disposition of the Greens' forces can be seen on the left, in green of course. To condense this, it's Lannisters and Baratheons against the Arryns and the Riverlanders, so two great houses against one and a half. As the Starks needed time to muster their forces from their great territory, the initial advantage belonged to the Greens. But we'll not go into play-by-play -play in this video. It's also fun to speculate which power the 300 EC characters would have supported. Stannis is characterized by his lawfulness and it's likely he would have supported Egan the Elder. If you think that's a stretch, here are his own words on it. She was daughter to one king and mother to two more, yet she died a traitor's death for trying to usurp her brother's crown. A pretty strong statement there. The claimants caused the rift in the Seven Kingdoms. With both claimants valid, the lords, and indeed the ladies in some cases, of the realm were free to pursue whichever belligerent suited them the most. It pushed the matter of succession from a principled opinion into a pragmatic choice. Lords would press contested claims and seek out to wrestle with their rivals in the name of king or queen, whichever suited them the most. It became a war of many smaller wars, local rivalries, and eventually, all the cracks in the kingdom were exposed and inflamed. The flames would die down and eventually the realm would know peace, but not before much noble and humble blood was spilled. By the end of it all, Targaryen dragons would either perish or be lost. It was not through victory but attrition that the conflict would end. Both claimants would die in the dance of dragons and, after many Targaryen deaths, the crown would eventually pass on to Rhaenyra's son, King Egon, the third of his name.